So welcome to this uh, Four Piece Cafe. Uh, some housekeeping, this is a Four Piece Cafe. That means that you are muted as you come in, but you can unmute yourself. And meanwhile, um, someone should answer the uh, support thing at uh, Four Piece. Cool. So uh, you can unmute yourself and you can speak up and ask questions. We encourage you to do so if you have questions. If you are not brave enough to speak up and talk to me, then you also have a chat window in uh, Zoom and you can ask your questions in there. I think we do about five different languages. Anything more exotic, please translate to English using Deeple, for example. Um, this session is recorded. You should have seen that as we come in because GDPR uh, tells you that in Zoom now. So it is recorded. It will end up on our YouTube channel and you can uh, review all the old sessions for Peace Cafes that we've done uh, in the, uh, the playlist we have on the YouTube channel. So that's the 4 Peace YouTube channel. Um, and you'll find all of them there. This session will end up there uh, as well soon. It needs some time to edit as usual, but then you'll find it there as well. So much for uh, administration. Uh, this session is about um, imposition. And we've done a few uh, other sessions on imposition. Um, and uh, as I said, this could be a relatively short one. We'll see uh, how long it actually takes because I mostly want to show the applications a little bit. And what I, what my goal was for this session is not to go into all the details of the software. That is something that we can uh, we can certainly do. Um, if someone is interested in uh, subsequent sessions. But my goal for today was mostly to position the software and to show you why I think that it has a, a place even in between all the other tools that we have that do imposition. And that sounds like we have a thousand of them. We actually have two others, I think that, well, three others. Um, that, uh, that do imposition. On the one hand, you have the, uh, the Caldera tools, the Prime Center that uh, mostly do things like uh, ganging and nesting. Then of course, most of you will know Kala's PDF toolbox that has its own imposition engine. Uh, luckily, um, an imposition engine where you can now also use JavaScript to create imposition configurations. And I will come back on that a, a little bit uh, later. And then we also do imp, and imp is uh, does everything, uh, ganging, nesting, uh, rectangular jobs, irregular jobs, and so on. So we have quite a few of these tools. Still, I think that the approach that quite took is a little bit different and uh, worth showing positioning where that tool fits and what it can do that you perhaps cannot do with the, with the other tools. So let's get started. Um, I, I think everyone should, I shouldn't assume that, but probably everyone knows uh, who is talking to you. Um, if you uh, don't know, then there is some information on the 4 piece website that is not very useful. Um, and if you, uh, if you look me up on the internet, you will find way, way more information than you're interested in. So, I'm the, suffice to say that I'm the CTO of Four Piece, uh, which means I get involved mostly when things get, some would say difficult. Uh, for me, it's mostly when it becomes interesting. And um, I try to be an expert on some of these tools that we have. Imposition is not really my main focus but I know enough about it to at least uh, position things, uh, I believe. So um, what are we talking about? Uh, we're, we're talking about Quiet. Uh, Quiet is a company that has existed for quite a while, quite a while. Um, no pun intended. I will do this again for sure. Um, company is actually about as old as their website looks. 
uh, sorry for uh, if anyone from uh, Quiet is here, but I don't think so. Um, Quiet was, if you look at uh, a little bit of uh, history, and my history is, is, is actually a little, a little bit wrong, I figured out meanwhile. The first product that they uh, released was quite imposing, uh, or quite imposing plus. This is a, uh, a plugin for Adobe Acrobat. I'll come back on that. Um, that was the first product that they that they created, and they still still sell that. They also have uh, quite a bo box of tricks, uh, quite revealing. But both of those products, the latest version that you can download is from 2014. Um, so not really um, continued anymore. Uh, in, in terms of time frame, what you're looking at is a, around the same time as most other PDF related tools uh, started to come into existence. So you're, you're looking at uh, somewhere between 95 and 2000, that is kind of, so this is also the uh, the time where uh, where pit stop was in, in invented for example it's the time that uh, Kalas started with PDF tools uh, originally not called PDF uh, toolbox but what then evolved into PDF toolbox all of these tools come from that same um, era uh, and why well because at that point PDF started to be interesting for uh, graphic arts. So companies also started making software for it. So uh, Quite Imposing Plus survived over the years and thrived uh, over the years. There's lots of users today. Uh, and then a couple of years ago, I don't know how long, uh, Quite also came up with uh, Quite Hot Imposing, which is a, um, a hot folder based automated version of Quite Imposing Plus. So. What is Quite Imposing Plus? Uh, as I said, it is a plugin for Adobe Acrobat, uh, the pro version, uh, of course. Um, and it is oriented towards commercial prints. If you look at what the functionality is, uh, it will mostly be used there. Although if you look at the functionality that they support, that you could certainly also use it in other uh, market segments. Uh, but again, at the time that they uh, developed Quite Imposing Plus, um, when, when it started to, uh, to be developed, PDF was mostly used in commercial print. And so that is still the core uh, market for, uh, for the tool. There's a, 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 a bunch of um, easy to use functionality, uh, like step and repeat and booklet and so on. Uh, and then, it also supports additional functionality around that. And most of that was added because in one form or another, you need these things if you want to build slightly more complex imposition scenarios. Yeah. Um, and you can see a list there of some things. I will try to show some of these, like the, uh, the, the add page numbers and, and text stuff. But you can also do split and merge. Uh, you can uh, do uh, duplication of pages as necessary. And there are even uh, variable data possibilities in there as well. So it goes from the very, uh, very basic to the much more uh, uh, advanced. And then you have quite hot imposing, which is essentially the same, but it allows hot folder based processing and it integrates into and focus switch. That's about what I uh, what I have on the uh, PowerPoint side. So it's always good to do something else than PowerPoint. Before I do that, I want to try and uh, give you a, a first idea on uh, where I think this is different from the other tools in uh, in, in, in well, the other tools that we have for in position. And I think. Um, the closest to it, perhaps, is, is PDF Toolbox. Uh, I'm not going to talk much about Prime Center because that is uh, squarely towards a different market segment and it focuses more on ganging and nesting, which is not really what Quite uh, aims at. 
Uh, I'm also not going to talk anymore about IMP because of all of the same reasons. Uh, um, uh, IMP, of course, uses no templates of any sort and whatever, but it, it's, it aims at, uh, again, ganging and nesting and, and sheet optimization and so on. That is not the focus of uh, Quite, but the, uh, the Quite imposition engine and the Callus imposition engine, uh, you certainly could put next to each other. And it's interesting to understand how they differ. And I think that the Quite approach, I think that the Callus approach is really interesting. I think that the quite approach is also really interesting. And it's, it's interesting to understand what the difference is and to, to, to understand which tool could be better in uh, which um, context. If, we, if you think about Callas, then, uh, and you know anything about the imposition engine, then you should know that there is some easy functionality like step and repeat and end up and uh, booklets stuff. And you don't have to know anything for that. You, you fill out five, six, maybe 10 max um, fields, and then that does, the, that does an imposition for you. And the other option you have is to use the impulse functionality and build your own uh, imposition configurations. And then the, the imposition configurations need to be created using the old style run list and sheet config approach or the new style JavaScript based approach. But you, all, you always need to create an, uh, a configuration. Where quite as different is that they also offer this easy stuff, but the easy stuff goes further in terms of options and so ever than what you have uh, with, uh, with Callas. And then they managed to uh, implement a, a, a quite interesting approach to create impositions without having a real template editor, but also without requiring you to learn some archaic language and uh, create your own imposition, imposition configurations. And so the tool goes pretty far, but it's still very, very easy to use. And that I think is where, where its niche is and why it's used that much. Now, let me try and, uh, and show what I was talking about. So first of all, you find it under uh, plugins in, um, in Acrobat. And then you have a, a number of ways to get started. I have uh, some menus that I could use but there is something called the imposition control panel um, that I can open as well. And the default imposition control panel looks like this. I can customize it. I can actually create my own panels if I want to with only the functionality that I'm, um, that I'm interested in, uh, which is an interesting approach uh, uh, as well. And I'm, going to start by by showing you how this works so let i have a label here it doesn't really matter what it is but i have a label and this is a, a three page pdf file um, and so i could say well what i want to do is step and repeat what is interesting is if i would do this in callas pdf toolbox i would get a window i have like i said maybe maybe 10 choices tops and then it does something, and I have to live with that. Uh, in general, if you look at even this very easy imposition in Quite, um, you have way more options than that. And on top of that, and either you're a fan of this or not, but there is a lot of, uh, a lot of text on these dialogues. So instead of just giving you 10 options and you have to figure out what they mean uh, and so on. This really tries to guide you through the whole process. If you don't know what you're doing, you can just read what is here and it will explain it to you in detail and try to explain what all of the uh, choices are that you are. And most of these cases, whether it's an up or booklet or step and repeat and so on, most of these are in a wizard form. So I will have to do next and then I get more options uh, and so on. So it really walks you through uh, the process. And if I want to do this, uh, yes, I want to create a new document. I don't want to modify my existing document. Um, I, uh, 
any excess thing here I want to get rid of, uh, I want to place everything at 100%. So you can really just go through the questions and answer one by one. So do I want margins? Yeah, I probably want some margins, uh, maybe 10 uh, mil. And uh, if I have five mil in between uh, each page, that uh, would be good. Uh, you'll see that in interspersed with these easy options, in, in many cases, there is an advanced capability as well that lets you, that gives you much more control over what's happening. But if you want to do something relatively easy, this is, this is really very simple to do. So uh, next, uh, what kind of sheet do I want? Um, yeah, uh, A3, or uh, I can uh, just go for the maximum uh, I told uh, quite imposing to trim any white space anyway. So uh, how many columns and rows do I do I want? Uh, let's do, uh, I don't know, let's do eight by, uh, by four. And then uh, that should be it. And what it tells me is that, um, yeah, uh, it is happy now. It says finish here instead of next. And then it's going to create the, uh, the imposition for me. So I end up uh, with a document that has three pages. I have three pages in my uh, incoming uh, file. I have three pages in the resulting file. Um, it created the number of columns and rows that I wanted. Um, the sheet has 10 mil additional uh, on top of it, and then five mil in between. And I wanted trim marks as well. Yeah. So. This is similar to what happens in PDF Toolbox. Let's be very clear. Uh, you, you can, there is a lot of overlap between the, the, the two engines uh, in terms of functionality. But if I wanted to create exactly this in PDF Toolbox, I would very quickly have to create my own imposition configurations. And of course, I could go further than what I can uh, do in, in quite imposing because I can create an imposition config using JavaScript and I can do all kinds of complex things uh, using JavaScript, but it is going to require a lot more work because I have to understand this configuration, create it and, and so on. Yeah. Well, here, by just going through uh, the wizard that I have for uh, this, uh, this step and repeat, I end up with exactly what I, uh, what I want. Now, what I've created here is very simple. It is a step and repeat. But of course, I could now um, uh, choose to do additional things to uh, this document. Yeah. Uh, perhaps I want to create um, if I go to uh, page tools, I think it is. Yeah. So if I go to page tools, I could say, well, now I want copies of this. Uh, I don't want one sheet, but I actually want five sheets of each of these things. Yeah. Or uh, I could go to uh, page sizes and uh, do things with uh, resizing uh, with rotation. Yeah? Maybe I want to just add some additional space and then add something at the bottom. Yeah? So I'm not limited to this one thing. I have a whole bunch of functionality that I can now add to this. If I want to do that every time, and this is very easy to do once, but what if this is a job, a type of label that I get often, and I always want to go through the same steps? Well, that is pretty cleverly done as well. First of all, I can create sequences. Yeah? And I've already, um, you can have different categories or groups in here. Uh, I've already created one sequence in here. And if I go to edit, you can see what that is. The sequence does a step and repeat. So this is exactly what we did um, manually before. And then I also used page tools to do uh, duplication. Yeah? And so if I go to um, my apologies, I have to go here and now I can have the sequence here and I can just say play. Yeah, what we end up with now is a 15 page document. Why? Because that's what my page sequence does. Uh, four, five, 
And then I have the other labels, five pages again. And then I have the, the last page and five pages again. Yeah? So I made a sequence that first creates a sheet where it does a step and repeat, and then it repeats each page five times. And that is my final document. Of course, I don't have to stop there. I can now uh, add all of the commands that I have available in the tool and I can add things to this sequence. So on the one hand, you can very easily with this wizard create the imposition that you're interested in. On the other hand, once you know what you want, you can very easily create a sequence that um, allows you to automate these things. And the sequences, if I do create new sequence, um, I can, for example, also do an import. And um, an import can be from another sequence. It can be from an uh, XML file as well. So you can really build on these and build a library with, with stuff that you want to repeat. There is one other thing that is interesting and that you can uh, use in a number of cases here. Uh, and you can see this import export button. Um, I'm going to save this document that I just created this in position. So let's put it on my uh, desktop. Yeah, that works. Okay. Now, what I, I'm going to do for a second in order to show you this, uh, where did it go here? Uh, I'm going to see if I can open that document in PDF toolbox. So this is the file I just imposed and uh, I'm going to open it up in PDF toolbox. Why? Because of this that you see here at the, at the side. If a PDF file contains embedded files, then PDF Toolbox allows you to see that. So in this PDF document, I have an embedded file called quitecommands.xml. And if I double click that, and let's move that to my uh, desktop uh, again, if I double click it, it will open it for me. So hide that and let's open this up. This XML file was embedded in this uh, imposed document. And I'm not going to go into any details. You also don't need to understand what it says here, but this is essentially the imposition that was done to the, uh, to the document. Yeah. Um, and uh, well, actually what you can see here is that there was a command step and repeat that was used. And if I scroll down, there is another command page tools, and that was used to duplicate pages. Yeah. So all of the things that we've done in that imposition that we did, and this is true whether I'm running a sequence or I am just uh, doing things with this wizard, all of the commands that we did are written into an XML file and they are embedded in this document. Yeah. And that means that if I now uh, so let's get rid of these. No, I don't want to save that. This was my original. So if I now say import exports, oh, what did it? Uh, what did it do now? Here, import export. So I want to import something. What do I want to import it from? Well, I want to import it from another PDF document. And I say, okay, now I can point to the document that was already imposed and I can say open. And this is what it imports. So the stuff that you saw in the XML file, the record of what we did during the imposition that was stored in that imposed file, I can now uh, use in uh, a sequence. Yeah? So each document that you impose using quite can be used as a template if you want to build automated impositions or to repeat an imposition that you did before. And that is that of course is very cool. And it's one of the ways that it avoids, it, it, it stops you from having to make uh, an imposition configuration. But that's pretty cool. 
let's look at something else. Um, look at this uh, booklet. And then uh, I'm going to take the last step. So this booklet thing, same concept. Uh, again, I can see advanced stuff if I want, but I'm uh, going to choose not to. So um, make the booklet page large enough. Yeah. So I don't know how, how big the, this, uh, the, this file is, the pages of the, this file are, but I just want a booklet. Uh, let's quite figure it out. Um, I want it to be saddle stitched. You can see that there are a bunch of other options. Again, all of the options are nicely explained. Um, yes, this is uh, okay. Interleave, so from back, from back. That is kind of what I would expect from a booklet. And then uh, I think all the pages have the same size in this case, so it doesn't matter all that much. And when I say finish, it, it, it gives me the imposition that I asked for. Um, so, um, well, this is the front and then the, uh, the inside uh, pages. Uh, actually, I have page numbers here. So page one, and then I have page three and page five and page seven and so on. So this is a, a classic booklet in position. Again, I didn't have to create an imposition configuration, but I do have quite a bit of uh, options that, uh, that were available uh, to me. Yeah? And again, if I save this file, uh, what I just did is embedded in there. So I can uh, replay this on other files and I can use this as a template. Now, this strategy should fall short if I want to do something more, um, more complex, right? I mean, uh, you need to make a configuration then. Well, not entirely. Uh, there is a, um, uh, uh, an approach that you need to get used to a little bit, but that is actually uh, quite interesting as well. Uh, let me uh, get rid of this impose document and go back to my uh, original. And there is something here that is called manual uh, imposition. So now it becomes a little bit more complex in terms of options that I have and so on but it's still doable. Uh, what do I want as a position? This is completely manual. So I, 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 I need to tell the software what it is that I want and it will try to guide me. So I can say, okay, so where do I want the imposed uh, stuff to, um, to go? Well, uh, what I want is a new document. Uh, well, 50 pages, I don't know, I, I need 50 pages. Uh, I just want to show what's happening here. So let's say two pages. Yeah. This is the imposed document. So um, that should be okay. There, I have an empty document uh, that has this, the, the, the pages in there that I specified. Now, where do the pages come from? Um, well, what it should come from is uh, uh, this document, uh, I think. Uh, so, um, yeah, this one, uh, pick there. And where do I want it? Uh, I want it at 100%. Um, I want it uh, not rotated and on the left. Yeah. So, what the software does is show me where this page is going to end up. Now, what I'm creating here is going to look very ugly because I am i don't have uh, something, I didn't pick something that is logical. In fact, if I have an A, an, for example, an A4 uh, booklet uh, or an A4 document, I could then pick A3 as a format and then I would have uh, two sheets on there uh, and I put them left and right and that's very easy. I don't have that, but it does allow me to show you uh, the options that I have. So I want page one to go there. And then the next page, we're at page two, I could change this if I wanted to, but the next page I want to be, well, maybe not right. Maybe I want to do this, but I want to give it a bit of, uh, of separation. So add that, and then uh, the next page we're uh, going to put there. So I can position all the pages where I want them. If I want to, then I can say, no, no now I want it at the bottom and maybe rotate it. Um, and uh, yeah, it's 
this doesn't make sense in the real imposition, but it is nice to show what kind of freedom that you have. I still want crop marks in there, or uh, maybe I don't, that depends. Just add page uh, in there uh, as well. And then uh, the next page I want on the bottom right. So by itself, this sounds like a, a really complex way of doing things, because of course, this is going to take me a while. Yeah, so why would I, I do it this way? Well, it is going to take me a while the first time, but given what we learned before, that the details of the imposition that I'm doing are saved in this document and can be used in subsequent documents, what this means is that I can go through an imposition once with a particular type of document. And once I've done that, I can simply replay it on other documents later. So I could save this manual step with all of the options that I have selected and the positioning of the pages and so on. I can have that manual step um, as part of a, an automation sequence. And once I have it as part of an automation sequence, then I can automate any further documents that come in. And I have not had to create an imposition configuration. And that's a really interesting concept. OK, uh, let's close this. Uh, I don't think anyone is going to use this document the way it is. So we're just going to uh, put this out of its misery as well. And I'm going to go back here. There is one last thing that I want to show uh, in terms of functionality, because I think it is it shows some of the other stuff. And so if I find my position control panel again, then I could look at something else. So I already said that you have options to control pages and so on. Yeah, um, I can uh, trim and shift pages, reverse order, shuffle pages around. Um, I can um, do things with page sizes. We saw something with uh, the page tools, uh, duplicating pages and so on. You also have capabilities, and I'm going to skip some of the more advanced stuff. Like I said, uh, that wouldn't fit in, uh, in, in the cafe I want to do here. But I do want to show the stick on things because this also in the context of imposition is, is cool. And the way it has been implemented is also quite cool. So um, I can stick things on top of my documents, uh, all of my windows, uh, go to the edge because I have less pixels than when I used it the last time. But so I can say, well, I want to add, what do I want to add? I can add a page number, I can add text, or I can add both. And both would allow me to say that, um, for example, I want to have a page and then the number to add is uh, one. I, I do have a space in there. And then after that, it says confidential. And I can specify all the parameters uh, that there are here as well. And when I say apply, that is applied at the top of uh, the page. Yeah. Um, that by itself is, is quite useful in a position context. Again, same principle. Once I have done that, um, I could pick it up, uh, play it back again, or add it into a, an automated sequence. So I can do my imposition first and then have a, an automated sequence that adds color bars using this, uh, this, this technique or adds page numbers uh, and so on. What is even more interesting is that, well, I can also add uh, masking tape. So if I'm, uh, if I'm not really interested in, uh, in this text that I have on this document, I can say, I want to mask that. And um, the masking allows me to, um, well, to hide stuff that, uh, that are on there. And all of these options, I have a a peel off uh, action as well. So I added stuff to the document. I can now say, um, I want to remove any masking tape that I put on there. Um, uh, I can also remove page numbers and so on uh, as well, yeah. even after imposition. And that is quite cool as well. So it's not just the imposition, the basic imposition stuff by itself. 
It is also some of the uh, su supporting things around that that are quite interesting. And like I said, you can, you can choose the uh, capabilities that you want to see here. I can customize this panel or, and I did that just as a uh, small test to show you, uh, I can go to my panels and then say, uh, I saved one. And where did it go? Because it's a very small uh, panel here. The Zoom thing is just on top of it, obviously. So this is a, a very small custom panel that I created. I can now add additional stuff on there, uh, uh, either uh, automation sequences uh, or maybe standard stuff, because I know that I'm going to use that. So I use. I frequently use step and repeat. I also frequently use this particular automation sequence. Uh, I can fill up a panel with only the things that I use over and over again. And that is very neat as well. Okay. So that for the, the plugin. Uh, and uh, like I said, the cool thing and the thing that I see as different from a lot of the other tools that I've worked with is that it has a really nice manual um, way of working. Lots of explanation in there as well. So you don't have to go through uh, 500 pages of documentation just to figure out how things work. But the fact that what you do is recorded in each imposed PDF and the fact that you have these automation sequences and actually the combination of these two means that even though it's a manual tool, it's also very easy to build fully automated sequences and then repeat them over and over on similar jobs. Okay. The last thing that I wanted to uh, show here is, and it is, a, it, it is quite simple, so it doesn't take all that much time, is that like I said, there is also a quite hot imposing uh, uh, possibility as well. And um, I have it running here. This is a hot folder application. So I can define one or more hot folders. And if I throw a file in there, it will do exactly what I told it to do. And of course, it is integrated with the plugin. So if I create automation sequences, in the plugin, I can easily attach those to my hot folder. Yeah. So um, I can add something here and I could say express setup and will it, uh, yeah, so uh, I made a folder for that. So let's just make number two in there. It's very creative naming. Yeah it automatically creates the folders that are necessary. So my input folder, and I can still change them if I want to, but this is easier. My input folder, this is where the, the resulting files go, where the original files go. And in case of anything going wrong, that's where that goes. And again, this is a wizard. So now I can, um, I can choose what I wanted to do. I can choose named automation sequences, and this shows you the automation sequences that I created in the plugin version. So I can very easily create something and test it in um, Adobe Acrobat uh, with quite imposing plus, and then use it in the automated version. Or as I said before, uh, we can pick something up from an existing PDF or an XML file. And existing PDF, of course, again, could be uh, picked up from the, uh, so if I say browse, do I still have that file on my desktop? Yes, I do. So I can use that PDF file that was imposed now as a control uh, file. And if I want to uh, look at what was in there, then I'm just gonna close these two. You can see that in that file, it had the uh, step and repeat and the page tools. Yeah. So I did the, and of course you can do the same with the manual stuff that I showed. I can make this manual in position uh, and, and modify it until I get exactly what I want in, uh, in, in the plugin. And then I can use that PDF file. 
as a control file for what I'm going to do in the automated version. And then uh, I can give this a uh, name, uh, let's call this uh, cafe. Um, and we'll also add the number of the sequence in here. And then I have a little uh, wait time and um, now uh, job folders. I'm going to skip that for now and just going to finish. And there we go. So now I have two hot folders set up. And of course, I can set up as many of these hot folders as I want. There. That is more or less what I wanted to show during this uh, cafe. Like I said, I'm not going into all of the functionality of the tools, but I think that the way that this works, the ease of use that you have because of that is interesting enough that it is worth um, looking into this. Uh, and like I said, instead of having to read lots of documentation, what you have in this control panel will allow you to, um, to experiment with these things and uh, uh, yeah, build the imposition that you want. And of course, I could go to the, uh, the help file and get uh, more things that uh, as well if I want that. OK, uh, if there are any questions, then uh, now would be a good time to enter them in here. Um, at, at one point, and if you want to review that, let me just uh, remind you of that. At one point, Michiel and I did a cafe on imposition in general, where we did uh, a more broadly positioning of the different tools uh, one against the other. And that is some of the story that I very briefly told in the, uh, in the beginning. Uh, this goes a little bit more into the possibilities of uh, quite imposing. I think there is at least one more topic that I would uh, like to do, uh, but we'll see how we do it and uh, and when. But that is the the variable data support that you have in there because that is quite uh, quite interesting as well. Uh, if you have any other topics uh, around quite that you would like to go uh, into more detail of, uh, let us know, and uh, we would be more than happy to uh, to look at that. Okay, so if you don't have enough color in your life, and to be honest, that's all of us, given the very uh, dreary winter that we're having, if you don't have enough color in your life, look next week, and we'll talk about expanded color gamuts and things. Well, actually, we heal well, I will not. Thank you very much for joining. Um, I'm sure I will see you again in an upcoming cafe, and uh, have a great rest of the day. Bye-bye. Thank you.